I will do an overview of this chapter briefly, and then we will discuss one theme that makes it relevant to our current existential predicament in today's world. So this has seventy-one verses, and we are coming to the end of it. This chapter. So first was the Navhak pastime, and I discussed that in my class last month. Then there is a description of the Ambarish Maharaj performing dharma as a duty as a king, and also bhakti as an expression of his heart. Then that is thirteen to twenty-eight. Then twenty-nine to forty-one is Ambarish Maharaj performed a year-long. एकादशी व्रत देन दुर्वास मुनि अटैक अंबरीश महाराज एंड वाज अटैक्ड बाय सुदर्शन इन रिटर्न सुदर्शन चक्र ऑफ द लॉर्ड दैट्स 42 48 49 to 62 इज दुर्वास मुनि सॉट हेल्प फ्रॉम ब्रह्मा शिवा एंड विष्णु प्रोग्रेसिवली वन आफ्टर द अदर एंड देन फाइनली हाउ द लॉर्ड ग्लोरीफाइड द डिवोटेड so that means he glorifies ambarish maharaj he glorifies in general devotees and then he tells when i am powerless to help stop the sarvashi chakra you have to go and take help from seek forgiveness from ambarish maharaj shamaya apya as i said try to pacify him shamaya try to pacify him so the theme i will speak on today is that perceiving god's love amidst the world distresses so we'll talk about this from the perspective of ambarish maharaj how he was devoted to the lord and yet this great distress came upon him that he was about to be killed for apparently no fault of his or for a, for a many minor fault actually there was no fault also so let's look at it broadly speaking so we we'll look at the world and what are the causes of distress in the world and then i'll talk about understanding god's love in the world as you can perceive in the actions of the world and then letting god's love heal our wounds so i will take this uh, over pro probably i'll take this part of it today and part of it tomorrow also we'll see how it goes if i complete this today then i'll go to the next theme and if at any time you have questions you could just uh, type them or raise your hand and if it's immediately relevant i'll take it at that time or i will take it toward the end of the class now now one of the fundamental truths of life that anybody who has lived even for a little time recognizes is that life is distressful that there is distress in the world now we can analyze these distresses from various perspectives but here is one way of analyzing it and i'll see how we can apply this in a our contemporary context so we could say the cause of distress is providence providence means that it just happens by nature's own way <clears throat> so for example we are traveling and suddenly there is a big a storm that comes and we are stranded in the middle of the storm and we are in danger so providence means what comes by nature's own way now we could broadly call this in our terms as adhyatmik hmm? hmm? this is a over simplified this is a simplified analysis but i'm just trying to phrase this in a way that is relevant for us so adhyat sorry not adhyatmik this is adi daivik that which comes by its own arrange by something which is beyond us we can't do anything about it hmm? now beyond that beyond such distress that comes is distress can very easily get aggravated by our thoughtlessness or carelessness say for example if you are driving and we are caught in a storm and then we forgot to put fuel in our we forgot to put fuel in our car and that's why the car can't move we forgot to charge our phone and our phone is discharged at that time so we are we are lost and 
we are stranded and there is no way out for us so this we can call as something which is like self inflicted adhyatmik what we bring upon ourselves as i said this is a uh, this is a one way of analyzing this adhyatmik adi bhautik adi we can be analyzed in different ways also but there is suffering that comes by nature's own way but when it comes by nature's own way if we are not careful then it can become worse so that our incompetence can make suffering worse and then beyond that there is malevolence so malevolence means that somebody you we human beings are capable not only of making mistakes so we could say this is broadly mistakes so mistakes are something which we do unintentionally accidentally unknowingly but we are also capable of misdeeds misdeeds means we do something which we know is wrong and we do it still because we want we want to gain something by that shortcut and we feel that it's worth it whatever is the problem that is going to come so malevolence refers to the human capacity for evil the human desire to profit from others pain so suppose we are we are stranded like that in a storm and at that time some robbers some hooligans some bandits come over there and they they threaten us they rob us and they strip everything away from us so this we can broadly call as adhi daivik sorry adhi bhautik that this is from people around us now <clears throat> now this is as i said let's not focus on the adhyatmik adhibhuti adhivik but it's a broad analysis providence incompetence and malevolence so things go wrong in their own way but our own carelessness makes things worse and if somebody is out to get us somebody is out to trouble us they are on a mission to to, uh, to to harass us to harm us then it becomes worse so let's analyze in general we can analyze distress in this manner in this threefold and by analyzing it in this threefold paradigm we can we will try to understand how we can deal with distress and how krishna consciousness equips us to deal with distress mm-hmm. now if you apply this threefold paradigm to ambarish maharaj's past time so by providence what happened over here was it is just by nature's own way durvasa muni didn't have any malevolent in any particular intention in coming at that particular time he came there as a guest to ambarish maharaj's place when ambarish maharaj's fast was about to end now this contrasts with say when durvasa muni went to the pandavas and the pandavas were in the forest and they had a akshay patra So that akshay patra, that disc, that plate, could give food only till Draupadi ate. And Durvasa Muni had been told by Duryodhana go in the afternoon. So that was not provid. So Durvasa Muni is going there was not providence. Durvasa Muni is going to Duryodhana at that time was Duryodhana's malevolence. He deliberately wanted to create trouble for the Pandavas. But here, it just happened accidentally. Sorry. what happened okay so and his fast was about to end he came there now incompetence means we make mistakes so generally when we are talking about we i i put one frame of analysis but you know the incompetence can be by us the incompetence can be by someone else also say if we are going back if we are going back to the earlier example if we are going by a car and we have a driver who drives the car for us and that person forgot to put fuel or forgot to charge that could be their incomp- others incompetence can also create problems for us so in this case what was the incompetence that durvasa muni misunderstood ambarish maharaj's action when ambarish maharaj broke the fast he thought that it was it was disrespectful and even insulting so ambarish maharaj broke the fast because he was put in a dilemma you know he had to break the fast at a particular time for the benefit to come about 
after he had done a year long austerity and yet he didn't want to disrespect his guest and uh, flout the etiquette that a host should not eat before the guest so what could he do he just took some water so he resolved actually in a expert way but his action was misunderstood by ambarish maharaj by by, uh, by durvasamuni and durvasamuni thought durvasamuni thought it not just disrespectful he thought it an insulting action an offensive action so i'll explain this a little bit further uh, but overall the point here is that we often think of as offensive something uh, which may not be offensive we take offense to others actions based on how we ourselves are situated so if somebody is very respect conscious then they get offended even by small small things let's come back to this point a little late about incompetence and malevolence later we'll come back to this but let's first analyze the framework so malevolence means that he made a mistake in judging okay it was a mistake of judgment but instead of clarifying hey, why did he eat like this he presumed it was because of insult because he was disrespectful and based on that presumption what did he do he decided that ambarish maharaj deserves to be killed and he abused his power to create this demon create this fierce mystical demonia kind of being which is meant to destroy ambarish maharaj now if we consider in this situation of course by the lord's mercy the sudhan chakra intervened and protected ambarish maharaj but the point is that this this was a sudden suddenly the situation escalated to become not just uh, dangerous but uh, not just uh, difficult but even we could say devastating so what exactly happened over here how did things become so bad sorry so if we consider this uh, now if we consider the incompetence i'm just expanding on these points so if we consider the incompetence part uh let's go before this to the say the providence part generally speaking in life all of us face difficulties and when we face difficulties at that time the important thing is to recognize that none of us are immune from the world's problems that the world is like a forest fire as prabhupada would often quote and he would say that oh okay the screen has gone off sorry hmm. so let's look at these points one by one providence prabhupada said the world is like a forest fire now the idea of a forest fire or world's problems are like forest fires nobody goes to set a fire but a fire suddenly comes up and generally when something goes wrong hmm, uh, things will always go, things will sooner or later go wrong so when things go wrong what cause we attribute determines what what solution we seek so that means if we think okay this xyz is the cause of this problem then we accordingly we will determine this is so and so is the solution now in this case what happened with ambarish maharaj was sorry with durvasa muni was that he thought what is this okay let me decrease this he thought that the problem was in case incompetence means that we all tend to generally the the more powerful a position we have the more 
we think that our conceptions our conceptions are correct so here generally we equate power with wisdom power with correctness of understanding that means if i am in a durvasamuni was in a senior and influential position so what he thought was that why was he doing like this because he was disrespectful so he presumed that his action the ambarish maharaj action was because of an attitude of disrespect now in precisely this may not apply to durvasamuni but in general what happens is that through this past time one theme is being taught that how a gyani or a sage durvasa muni here represents not a devotee but a sage who is more of a gyani or a yogi basically he is renounced but he is not a he is not exactly a devotee he knows about vishnu he knows about devotion to vishnu but his path is more of a path of austerity and ambarish maharaj represents a devotee so what Bhag- the bhagavatam overall is saying is show- showing how bhakti is the supermost path and how exponents of other paths no matter how exalted they may be they will fall short so what happens is there is no sufficient higher taste and in this case what is the higher taste the higher taste is inner security inner satisfaction and when that is there is no inner satisfaction then what happens is one starts looking for outer prestige so durvasa muni okay if somebody doesn't respect him what is the big deal why, 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 okay somebody didn't respect us why why become why make a such a big scene out of it so in general we are all pleasure seeking creatures and we need pleasure somewhere so somebody who has uh, re- who has rejected the we could say the gross creature pleasures of life the grosser pleasures of life often they seek so misdirected search for pleasure so what happened with him broadly speaking was that everybody wants some kind of pleasure some kind of happiness nobody can live without that so generally people who get offended by things we can look at ourselves also when we get angry with someone it is usually not just because of what they have done but also because of what has happened in our life now we are sometimes when we are irritable already we not just get angry with someone when we just get enraged with someone that means it's far a severe level of anger it's because we are already dissatisfied with something dissatisfied or annoyed or something like that so that results in somebody some action becoming just a trigger for the explosion so those who don't respect themselves are most angry when others don't respect them this is one of the paradoxes of human nature that if a person is well situated in their self identity in their self in their self understanding then okay if someone respects me somebody doesn't respect me it doesn't matter so much but if somebody is not secure in their own self understanding then somebody else disrespecting becomes unbearable how dare you disrespect me like this so that we see this small provocation leading to a large explosion and it's fascinating the human mind has a sorry where is it excuse me Mm-hmm. the human mind has a great capacity to rationalize when we suffer uh, when we face some problem and do something 
actually we tell ourselves rational lies when we rationalize we tell ourselves rational lies that means we are doing something bad but we believe that we are doing it for a good cause so how does this work if we consider for example if you read shringi's cursing shringi's cursing of uh, parikshit maharaj he thought if what he says is it is the duty of kings it is the dharma of kings to respect the brahmanas and this parikshit this uh, parikshit has stopped respecting kings because he is adharmic and because krishna has departed from the world and he thinks there is no protector of dharma so he can get away by doing adharmic things but he doesn't know that i am here to protect dharma so he actually thinks i am protecting dharma and doing god's work by by punishing by cursing parikshit maharaj so what happens is generally speaking when when anybody does something wrong they don't really think that they are doing something wrong they believe that what they are doing is right what they are doing is for a right purpose even if the means are not right the purpose is still right similarly if we consider here when durvasa muni did what he did so durvasa muni attacked ambarish uh, ambarish maharaj so he thought that actually again if the if a sage is not respected properly by a householder then the foundation of dharma will collapse he thought that i am protecting dharma by by cursing by punishing somebody who is not following dharma by, by punishing a dharma violator so he thought he is acting for a right cause and that's why he used his power in fact we can say he didn't use he abused his power he abused his power and he attacked he attacked ambarish maharaj so when he attacked ambarish maharaj in general for all of us what happens is that here we see the in now durvasa muni was not a bad person he is a sage he is not a evil person but the action that he did was a terrible action so what happens is for many of us incompetence can very easily degenerate to malevolence that means we misunderstand things and then once we misunderstand some situation then what happens is immediately we start using or abu abusing our power to set it right so malevolence is wanting to harm someone incompetence is just getting things wrong so actually speaking we all as human beings we all are incompetent sooner or later we all commit mistakes we are fallible we know that we all have the four defects within us we are fallible finite beings but what happens is this is something intrinsic within us that we all will commit mistakes sometimes or other but from mistakes to misdeeds that is a journey that can and should be avoided so when does mistake leads to misdeeds that is broadly speaking when <clears throat> we have power and when we abuse power so <clears throat> when we have power and when we abuse power that is when what happens is mistakes lead to misdeeds somebody may get angry and some people may yell and scream and scream when they get angry somebody else may take up things and throw at the other person when they get angry somebody else may 
you take a gun and shoot someone when they are angry so anger is the same but what kind of what kind of power one has and to what extent somebody abuses that power that determines to what extent the mistakes will become misdeeds and when in this case what happened durvasa muni he there is a mistake of judgment on his side and the mistake of judgment is understandable we all commit mistakes but from that mistake of judgment instead of evaluating maybe my judgment is not right maybe i need to correct it instead what he did was he immediately jumped to the conclusion that i that ambarish is wrong and ambarish deserves to be punished and i am going to the person going to punish it so what happens it is said that the most dangerous jumping is jumping to conclusions jumping to conclusions and you know we may not jump from some people do adventure sports where they jump from jump in parachutes from helicopters or they jump from high cliffs down we don't do anything like that but we we all are prone to this jumping to conclusions and when one jumps to conclusions like that that can very easily now when we jump to conclusions we can get into trouble or we can get others into trouble and we all have this tendency to jump to conclusions but as again it depends on how much power we have that will determine how far our jumping to conclusions can become harmful so in this case for ambarish mahar for for durvasa muni it's important that this is not a story of a of a we could say like a hero and a villain it's not a good guy versus a bad guy it you could say if at all we want to say it's like a good guy and a great guy so durvasa muni is also is also exalted person and ambarish maharaj is also exalted so but a person who is a devotee is far more exalted so what happens over here is ambarish maharaj's action when misunderstood by durvasa muni leads to durvasa muni exploding at him and that explosion leads to devastation so of course now we know that there is a principle of karma and by the principle of karma sometimes our actions come back to hit us immediately sometimes our actions may come and come back and hit us after some time so different through so if we see like i compared these two past times so in different past times so if you consider consequences come at different in at different times or in different ways i, I told earlier past time of say shringi now there is no mention of shringi having any consequences but because the point of that past time is different the point of that uh, shringi's curse the point over there is to demonstrate parikshit maharaj um qualification for receiving the bhagavatam that he was so devoted that he accepted that curse and he decided that let me renounce the world and let me accept the curse so in both case in the case of shringi's curse parikshit maharaj had the capacity to retaliate but he didn't retaliate and in the case of durvasa muni's durvasa muni's curse also ambarish maharaj had the capacity to retaliate but he but he didn't now we could say that the per the past times purpose was different now in this case as we are coming closer and closer to the 10th canto of the shrimad bhagavatam the past times purpose is different over here the we are coming toward the 10th canto where we are having a lot of um, a lot of uh, a lot more intimate picture of krishna of the lord and his love being demonstrated so here the the power of devotee of devo- devotion and the lord's love for his devotee that is what is being demonstrated over here so in this so there is no mention of shringi getting any consequences for his actions but in the case of durvasa muni 
when he curses the consequence comes back upon him and what is the consequence there is this lord surashin chakra that appears surashin chakra just effortlessly destroys the demoniac being that durvasamuni has created and it doesn't stop there rather that same demoniac that same surashin chakra now starts attacking ambarish maharaj uh, attacking ambarish maharaj's attacker that is durvasamuni and as he is being attacked like this durvasamuni has to flee he just completely powerless is completely overwhelmed what can i do how can i save myself from this situation and as he is watching the situation he is trying various means so when we come to this particular past time we have come to a place where durvasamuni has traveled the whole universe and he has sought help from brahma he has sought help from shiva he has lord sought help from vishnu and they all have said we can't help you we can't help you that you and finally which is vishnu brahma and shiva say that we can't help you because it's vishnu's weapon so then he goes to lord vishnu and vishnu says even i can't help you but you have to go and seek forgiveness from ambarish maharaj itself so i'll discuss that theme of of uh, how the lord comes to the rescue of ambarish maharaj in tomorrow session but this this threefold paradigm or this threefold aspect of providence incompetence and malevolence let's consider how we can apply it in our situation today now we could place ourselves in the situation of ambarish maharaj you could place ourselves in the situation of durvasamuni whichever way we want to look at it but if we consider you know the whole world now is afflicted by the pandemic to some extent things are decreasing but things keep see things seem to worsen again decrease it's still very much there with us so if we consider the demon of the covid pandemic that is attacking us so if we consider this providence incompetence and malevolence how does this apply to the suffering that we are facing so the so through nature's variation nature in, in nature some mutations happened and it there the, it infected humans from animals and lead, it led to a pandemic now of course this is one theory maybe whatever the origin is we don't know but basically we could say at this stage let's presume that there was no no nobody who deliberately created this pandemic it happened by nature ways so through mutations in the, the beings through bats or whatever channel the disease just came and it spread all over the world hmm? but there is providence which by providence the suffering came upon us but by incompetence the suffering the problem became worse so wherever the problem originated if there had been better precautions taken care of that individually or by that country then things could have been kept somewhat more in control things could have the problem could have been not as bad as it is now and that's not just in the country of origination wherever it spreads no it is a disease that spreads by contact by proximity and of course we can't avoid all proximity but to some extent our carelessness has definitely played a role in the spreading of the pandemic so our incompetence can make things worse incompetence can mean not taking the adequate precautions but beyond that there is malevolence malevolence means now as a vaccine is being developed now of course there are some concerns whether the vaccine should be taken or not but overall people are interest most people are eager to put this whole problem behind them and if a vaccine can help them to do that they can do it but then there is this whole problem of vaccine nationalism coming up where you know the countries which have produced the vaccine they want to mint money out of it or the agencies which have made made the vaccine they have they want to mint money out of it and 
if if in future not as a vaccine a cure comes up for it so there is how to what extent does one at such a time seek one's own <clears throat> monetary gains and to what extent does one offer help at a compassionate or humanitarian level so there are cases of people wanting to make money now many of you may be aware that in india things have become very acute and medicines sometimes are of medicines or oxygen or whatever is required that is not easily available and even when it is available the prices are jacked up several times and this makes suffering far more than what it needs to be so now the malevolence can be not just in terms of some evil people see the bhagavatam offers us nuanced analysis as i said it's not that durvasamuni was a bad person he was a good person but he did a very bad thing so what happens is when provocation comes or when temptation comes even good people can end up doing bad things so when there is the situation of uh, the opportunity to make it big to make money then even ordinary people who are not very unethical they can also end up doing terrible things now we may say i am not anyone among them yes that 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 is hopefully true but we we, we all can have malevolence not directed toward others sometimes it can be directed towards um, it may not be explicit malevolence that is directed toward others but prabhupad says that not helping others in their spiritual quest in their spiritual journey or obstructing people in their spiritual journey is also a form of violence so we cannot immediately control what providence has brought in our lives but we can avoid incompetence by by being cautious by being careful at a material level and actually we can remove we can counter malevolence through purification so i'll talk about this in the next session where i'll uh, where we'll discuss both how this past time goes forward and how ambrish maharaj is saved by the lord's intervention and how perceiving krishna's how can we perceive krishna's love in this situation and how can krishna consciousness help us to deal with providence incompetence and malevolence as it manifested in the pandemic that is gripping the world today so i'll summarize what i spoke today broadly i spoke today on this theme of perceiving the lord's love amid the world distresses world's distresses so we started by talking about <clears throat> an overview of this chapter and how ambarish maharaj was threatened and protect threatened by durvasamuni and protected by the lord and we analyzed the distress that he was facing in terms of a threefold framework that is providence so problems come by their own by nature's own way incompetence means our own actions make things worse like say a storm comes while we are driving and then we we forget to have adequate fuel or adequate charge in our phone and get stranded that's incompetence and malevolence is somebody comes and tries to rob us at that time so to some ex- so understanding this threefold paradigm helps us to see how we can deal with problems and how our spirituality can help us to deal with problems also so with respect to durvasamuni's past the ambarish maharaj past time by providence durvasamuni came at a time when ambarish maharaj was about to break his fast and incompetence means he misunderstood that durvasamuni was the one thought that ambarish maharaj is being disrespectful and insulting whereas actually durvasam ambarish maharaj was just, just expertly resolving a dilemma and then his malevolence was he tried to kill durva uh, ambarish maharaj so there uh, a major part of the class was how incompetence may lead to malevolence that we all will make mistakes because we are finite fallible beings but from mistakes to misdeeds how does that happen when we have power which leads to arrogance that means when we have power we tend to presume that my understanding is the correct understanding that we tend to jump that most dangerous jumping is jumping to conclusions as i said 
but that's one thing but when we have power and then we abuse that power so the abusing of power was man ambarish maharaj uh, was attacked by durvasamuni and generally when we abuse power we don't think we are abusing power we rationalize so rationalize is rational tell rational lies so both both shringi and durvasamuni thought that they are actually even if what they are doing is excessive but they are doing it for a good purpose that was what they were thinking they think they are protecting dharma so similarly we all may succumb regenerate from incompetence toward malevolence so we talked about how in the covid pandemic that has spread all over the world we are also seeing the suffering in this threefold paradigm of providence incompetence and malevolence now how by krishna consciousness we can make sense and then address the distress that we are facing we'll discuss in tomorrow session Thank you very much Hare Krishna Do we have any time for questions Yes bro we have comments time. As long as you have time yes bro So do what is please feel free to unmute yourself to ask any questions or comments Hare Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Hare Krishna Hare Prabhu good to see you Tandavat Pranams good to see you good to see you also Gurshan Prabhu um a couple comments and um, reflections so one uh, durvasa muni was powerful enough to actually go to vaikuntha um, most yogis are not able to go to vaikuntha to seek shelter of lord vishnu and to personally see him um, so could you speak on that please okay mm, good question see there are broadly two things over here as i said when the bhagavatam teaches certain lessons it talks about very powerful characters who sometimes do wrong things so for example we have brahma vimohan leela or we have indra getting into trouble or doing bad things like in govardhan leela so when the bhagavatam talks about characters doing wrong things it doesn't just talk about ordinary characters it talks about extraordinarily powerful characters going wrong for example we have a king bharat who was very young and very renowned despite being young and still he got deviated because of a deer so in general uh, when the bhagavatam is trying to teach a particular lesson each of these past times is talking about a particular lesson of how say how the power of temptation is there or whatever is the particular lesson is there it talks about extraordinary character so if we consider durvasa muni embodying or representing a spiritualist who is not on a who is not on a path or not on a devotional path exactly so then he is extraordinarily powerful powerful enough that he can even go to vaikuntha so now going to vaikuntha what does it exactly mean now some commentators say that he doesn't actually enter vaikuntha he comes to the doors of vaikuntha and lord vishnu sees him and lord vishnu interacts with him from there but there is no specific reference to that directly in the bhagavatam story so even if we put that aside he certainly is able to reach vishnu and communicate with vishnu in vaikuntha whether it is exactly inside or outside the point is that going to vaikuntha is not just a matter of uh, uh physical relocation it is more a matter of re- redirection of the heart so e if- Prabhupad was Prabhupad wrote this book Easy Journey to Other Planets and when there was this fascination with going to the moon and when the scientists asked him oh, so can we go to the moon by this he said yes and how can we come back he said why do you want to come back so the idea is that he he was Prabhupad understood the Chandraloka is a higher heavenly planet so similarly going to Vaikuntha is not just a matter of physical relocation so even if somebody acquires some power which is normally not possible so when prabhupada said normally it is not possible to go to higher planets also by mechanical means prabhupada says by, sometimes by spacecraft it is possible but even if one goes there one is actually not going there because what is happening is he is not experiencing the joy of vaikuntha he is not experiencing the prema the love for the lord that is characterizing vaikuntha so he is not in vaikuntha consciousness because vaikuntha consciousness is how can i serve you o lord but we can say the opposite of vaikuntha the material consciousness can be there even in religion 
so it's material religiosity that religiosity is god what can you do for me or do this for me so now people may seek god's intervention by various means normally we just go we just pray where we are we might go to a temple and pray we might do some austerities and offer some sacrifices as a means of appeasing the lord some somebody might even be able to go directly to the abode of the lord but the mentality is not spiritual it's not devotional so because he doesn't have love for the lord he doesn't have a desire to serve the lord so even if by mystic powers he is able to go to vaikuntha so that indicates the extent of his mystic powers but even that level of mystic powers is not enough for him to counter the devotional power that comes to that has, that is there with ambarish maharaj so that's the point of that that story or that uh, that point that he was able to go even to vaikuntha okay thank you may I, may i ask a follow up because i had two questions along the same strand yes bro that's okay so the the follow up is um does the shastra say what how he changed his mentality after this past time because these munis live for millions of years right um and he's having to live with the consequence the embarrassing consequence of this past time being narrated in shrimad bhagavatam for you know millions of years to come and millions of people hearing this past time and hearing about how he you know cursed a great devotee and was forced to suffer the consequences yes so my understanding is now as far durvasa muni is a character who comes or occurs quite often in our scriptures he is later there with radharani he comes to radharani also and he gets radharani serves him and now of course from external perspective it is who he blesses radha he blesses radharani it says whatever you serve whatever you cook will be like nectar but in a actual sense radharani is the radharani is blessing him just by her association so if we consider in general in the, the bhagavatam's mood is that even when a sage does something wrong that sage is not really persecuted or uh, shukracharya for example he gives the advice to bali maharaj which is directly against lord vamanadev says don't give him the kingdom and then after that whole past time lord vamanadev straight away would ask shukracharya he still like is respectful to him and treats him as authority says what was wrong with bali maharaj sacrifice and it's interesting that shukracharya gives a very devotional conclusion he says that mantra tas tantra sa chidram but actually there was no glorification of the lord there was no chanting of the lord then that's why this sacrifice was wrong so he gives a devotional uh, devotional understanding but that doesn't necessarily mean that he becomes a devotee thereafter he still remains a guru of the demons so he is in his position and he will he will evolve according to his position as it is appropriate so generally the sages we could say that they of course are special beings because they are in the bhagavatam and they are also have in the universal dispensation they have powerful positions the bhagavatam is not so much focusing on their spiritual trajectory the bhagavatam is giving us lessons for how we can progress in our spiritual trajectory so yes they will of course learn and they will grow but how exactly they will grow that is not the thrust of the bhagavatam so we have ambarish we have parikshit maharaj hearing he is a king and he, that's why most and he is talk he wants to become delivered and so that's why most of the bhagavatam is also about kings so and there are other characters who appear and uh, disappear and so just like in sometimes in a movie there are some characters who are like villains or who unwittingly assist the villains or who do something wrong but we don't have a complete back story or a subsequent story of those characters so they are there so in general they will also learn and they will grow but how fast that will be that may depend on various factors their own consciousness the lord's plan and various things like that so in general we don't demonize or demean the sages 
is it embarrassing yes we could say sometimes indra's actions are quite embarrassing but we see overall within the universal dispensation that indra still goes back to a respectable position and he is not just he regains the position but he is respected thereafter so it does seem that these indiscretions they can be much more than indiscretions but they are they are not held against those characters forever we while learning lessons within the bhagavatam we need to learn valuable lessons but the but the overall if somebody is in universal influential position in the universe then others don't hold it against them for a long time okay thank you thank you prabhu so thank you for your comments also andrea mata ji and also himangi mata ji and uh, kartik prabhu so yes we will continue in tomorrow's session and we'll discuss about how krishna consciousness can help us deal with the problems coming from providence incompetence and malevolence thank you very much grantraj shrimad bhagavatam ki jai chaitanya charan prabhu ki jai gaur bhakta vrind ki jai dai gaur premanande dihari bol hare krishna hare krishna